the word of God for advancement. Hallelujah. I see you advance in Jesus' name. I hear the Holy Ghost say, it is time for my people to laugh at the face of the enemy. Hallelujah. I see restoration come to you. Grace is given to you at this hour. Hallelujah. You are rising in the strength of God, in the ability of God, and in the grace of God. Hallelujah. Can you make some joyful noise to the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Always a pleasure to be in God's house here at the Glory Pavilion Church with Reverend Dr. Ife. Okay. If you're watching us anywhere in the world, know for sure that the same grace that is at work here is also with you wherever you are. Hallelujah. God's servant will bring in God's word again today because we know that his word, God's word, is able to give us our inheritance among all those who are sanctified. And before we have the word today, we're going to have the amazing Numa praise. Lead us in that moment of praise and worship. And we're just going to touch heaven today. I'd like you to just get to your feet as we pray and usher in the new praise today. Lord, we thank you. Say with me, I have life in abundance. The Holy Ghost is with me. And therefore, I have the fullness of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak over this atmosphere. We ask that your word will have free course and your grace will be poured afresh all over the world. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus praise in the house. He's worthy. Blessed be your name, Jesus. You reign forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, blessed be the Lord who reigns forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice.
Men will sit in darkness until light comes. There are people that are comfortable in poverty. They don't like it, but they are in it. There are many situations in our lives that it looks like this thing, I'm going to live with it. Blessings are there. I hear about them. But this one, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, we're talking about great light coming, God's power coming. Many times we don't realize that it's a person that we're talking about. It's always a person. God cannot bring light without a person. A person is his instrument. He must use somebody. I'd like you to go to um, the book of Luke, chapter 13. Let's read it by Jesus. Luke 13, verse 10. One of those days, Jesus was teaching where? In one of the synagogues. On what? On the Sabbath. So, this story happened in a synagogue when Jesus was teaching. Hallelujah. The next verse now says, verse 11. Hallelujah. And while he was there, he said, behold, there was a woman which had what? A spirit, not the Holy Ghost. He had the spirit. That's not a good thing. Had the spirit of infirmity for how long? 18 years. So this woman and that spirit were living together for 18 years. She sat with that spirit for how long? For 18 years. And nothing was happening to change the situation. That spirit was ready to live for another 18 years with this woman. Hallelujah. Did she like that spirit? Talk to me. Did she like that spirit? No, she didn't like it. What did she do about it? Nothing. Why did she not? There was no light. Hallelujah. So this woman for 18 years was enjoying the presence of that spirit. And when that spirit was there, what did he do to this woman? Bible says the woman was bowed together. That spirit twisted that woman. And the woman could not, not, would not. She wanted to, but she could not. Because the spirit supervised her bowing down. Hallelujah. This is terrible. How many people around you are like that? Hallelujah. That are in situations where they are bowed by the spirits that control their lives. Hallelujah. As we read on in verse 12, we're told that when Jesus did what? Now saw her, he called to her. So Jesus apparently recognized that. Hallelujah. He called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. That was all it took for the woman to be free. Thou art loosed from your infirmity. Short sentence. Hallelujah. Spoken by the right person. Praise God. Short sentence. Spoken by the right person. Brought change of 18 years. Praise God. How did this woman get to be recognized by Jesus? How did he know that she was bound for 18 years? I'm going somewhere with this. How did he know? Praise God. I'll tell you how he knew. Let's go uh, again. We're looking at the book of Luke. And uh, if we look at verse 16, Luke chapter 4, we'll see something. The Bible says that he came to Nazareth where he had been what? Brought up. And we're told, as what? His custom was, what was he doing? He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Where was Jesus teaching when he saw that woman? Talk to me, somebody. Where was he? In the synagogue. What was he doing? He was teaching. But you see, when he began to teach in the synagogue, it's not the first time he's going to the synagogue. Hallelujah. We are told here that he was what? Brought up. Can you see the word brought up? Can you see it? Brought up. So this is how he grew as a baby. Hallelujah. His parents used to carry him to the synagogue. Hallelujah. They always brought him to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. 
And what was he doing as he came to the synagogue? He used to sit with his parents. Hallelujah. He used to sit with his parents. Praise God. And I'm sure as a young man, he may have been sitting by himself, but he used to go to the synagogue because it's a custom that he has. Hallelujah. And so, brethren, the truth is that in the synagogue, he always saw that woman. And he always wondered, hey, this woman is suffering. Hallelujah. This woman is suffering. Oh, my God. You know, at the age of 12, he said, I must be about my father's business. But he could not do the business. Hallelujah. He couldn't do the business. He knew he should do it, but he couldn't. Hallelujah. He knew he should do it, but he couldn't. So, when he used to come to the synagogue and listen, he will look around, he will see that woman. For some reason, the woman also used to come to the synagogue. Hallelujah. But Jesus kept watching. He kept looking at her. Praise God. He knew what God's will was, but he could not do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. But a time came, praise God, when the Holy Ghost came upon him. Hallelujah. And Babu tells us that Jesus now returned in his power. Hallelujah. So when he came to the synagogue and saw that woman, he said, your day has come. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. And I will give an illustration here. Blessed be his name. Amen. Professor Morrow is here. He's one of the prominent professors in the University of Benin. Former DVC. Praise God. He's a member of the governing castle. Praise God. You know, Lemma, Sister Rosalie's daughter, is looking at Pastor Mori. She now walks up to him after the service and tells him, Good morning, sir. I said, Yes, Lemma, good morning. I have a special request from you. I said, ah, Sure. In his mind, he'll be running through what does she need? Is she due for admission? Does she need the favor? Does he? Say, yeah. What do you need? And then she says, I'd like to be a lecturer in the department you are currently the dean of, of law. he will have to ask her to repeat her request. Am I correct? Yeah, because he's not sure that he's hearing properly. What did you say you wanted? He says, sir, you know you are one of our fathers in church. He says, yes. You know, the people, when they want favor, they list, they list it with a lot of groundwork. Ah, she's even staring at him already. It's like I'm speaking to her. Sir, I know that you are in a position, which is correct. I know you know the VC. It is correct. I know you love me. Again, it is correct. So, sir, I've never asked you for any favor. I just need this one. Please, sir, I want to be a lecturer in your faculty. You cannot tell me you don't have the power. You know the VC, you are the dean. Make me a lecturer. Will he be able to do that? He won't. So he doesn't love her. Ah, uh -uh. Okay, let me start afresh. Is he in a position? Yes. Uh -huh. Does he love her? Yes. Ah. So why are you saying that he cannot grant it? Eh? Okay, she does not match that request. In other words, it is not that he doesn't want her to be a lecturer. But this version of her, this version of her cannot be. But you know what many of us do? Every day will be coming to him. Why? Why don't you 
you want to help me? Then you go on a fast. So every Sunday, he now goes to her, uh, to him. Hallelujah. You can bring an offering to make God do it. Hallelujah. Brethren, the truth is this. The brand of person that she must be to become a lecturer is not this one. What she should pursue is not going to him. Praise God. To ask, make me a lecturer. That's not what she should be doing. What she now needs to do is go to him and say, sir, okay, what do I need to do to qualify? Then he will advise her, read well and pass your wayek. Where are you studying for your wayek? When you are feeling jam, feel this. Hallelujah. If she keeps following that a day we come, she won't need to even ask him. Before we say, hey, that's your plan. How far? Do you still want it? Hallelujah. That is why God is summoning us. There are many things that we are asking for we are not ready for. Every small thing provokes you. Coming to church is a problem for you. Your prayer life is zero. Worship God, you can't even pray five minutes. You are not ready for what you are asking God for. And Jesus had to enjoy it. Bible says he had to, he was seeing the woman, but he kept busy with what? Bible says he grew in wisdom, in favor, and in stature. He didn't jump to go and meet the woman. Madam, madam, let's try. Eh? Let's try. He left the woman alone. 18 years. 18 years. He was 12 years old when he saw that woman in the synagogue. He kept growing. He kept walking in favor, growing in it, understanding it. Hallelujah. But brethren, his day came. Hallelujah. And when his day came, it was not a strong, it was a statement. It was one statement. One statement. Hallelujah. Brethren, we are in a very special season. Praise God. Special season. Special season. The version of you God needs, pursue it. Hallelujah. Pursue it. Pursue it. There are three things that are required. Hallelujah. There are things that I'm planning to get into. I have no time today to deal with them. But I want to stop on this note. There are three things you must engage your heart in. Three things. Three things. Number one, God needs a man. That's not number one, sorry. God needs a man to change situations. God needs a man. To change your situation, God needs a man. Which man does he need? The other version of you. Not this one that is sitting in church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God needs that version. So, three things about that man. Number one, that man must be a man that has accurate knowledge. Accurate knowledge. I was bound for a long time until the day I not discover truth. Hallelujah. What you know sets you free. Praise God. Knowledge. Accurate knowledge. Accurate knowledge. Praise God. You need to pursue knowledge. Right knowledge. Hallelujah. Praise God. Accurate knowledge. We must pursue that. The truth is that many believers are ignorant. Somebody came to my house yesterday. And uh, I did something. There's this song that says, Abraham's blessings are mine. Let's sing it. Abraham's blessings. Go ahead, sing it. 
I'm blessed. Oh yeah. Sing it again, everybody. in the morning are you blessed in the afternoon are you blessed in the evening is that not wonderful is that not wonderful what is the blessing of Abraham give me a mic you said the blessings are yours hallelujah if I say I want to talk to Dr. Walter do you know who he is huh is it not this man? Talk that. Is it not this man? You are sure? It's not this man. This is not Dr. Walter. Ah. Oh, sorry. Is this man? This is not Dr. Walter. So you know who Dr. Walter is? Okay. You are saying that Abraham's blessings are what? Yours. Can you recognize them if they come? What is Abraham's blessing? Brethren, anything you... You see, the proof of knowledge is freedom. Any area of your life you are not free, you are ignorant. I don't care if you can quote a scripture. You are ignorant. Because the proof of knowledge is freedom. You will know what? The truth. And what will happen? It will make you free. I've asked several people, what is able? You said the blessing is yours. What is that blessing? They don't know. But they love the song. They're telling everybody, the blessings are mine. In fact, in the morning, I have it. Come in the afternoon, check me out. I have it. Before I sleep, Unko, I have it. Hey, Abraham's blessings are mine. What is the blessing? Zero. 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 The man that will bring light, he's a man that knows right knowledge. Right knowledge. Not half baked truth. We just assume that his wealth is long life. Let me tell you what is happening here. Somebody sees me preaching here and studies how I've dressed. The way I'm holding the microphone. Praise God. So the person goes to my tailor. He shows my kind of outfit. Then he starts practicing the whole microphone like me. Then he buys white handkerchief. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And when he's coming up, he gets a notebook. Hallelujah. He feels that that is what is making what I'm doing have the effect it is having. No. What is bringing it is not this microphone I hold it or how I'm dressed or how I'm talking. Hallelujah. The things that make what is happening here happen, you are not ever going to see them here. Abraham's blessing will give you wealth. Hallelujah. But that is not Abraham's blessing. So that's why you are looking for the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Because as long as you think that Abraham's blessing is wealth, you will keep looking for how to get wealth. Hallelujah. What do you think made that man remember me after 34 years? Hallelujah. Those are the secrets that make those things happen. Hallelujah. So number one, a man that will bring light must have the right knowledge. Right knowledge. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. But knowledge is key. There are three things. Three things. Knowledge is key. 
Because brethren, I feel very strongly in my spirit that God wants to bring a new chapter in our lives. A new chapter. Enough of nonsense. Are you listening? The devil is not that strong. He's not that powerful. 18 years was brought to an end as soon as light came. That's where God is getting you to. Hallelujah. Enough of the struggles. Are you listening? There's a dimension you can function in where you carry light. Arise and shine. Why? Because the light has come. Light has come. Stand to your feet this morning. Lord will bless you. We honor you, Jesus. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Blessed be his name. Why don't you ask God for light today and say, God, shine your light on me. Hallelujah. Shine your light on me. Shine your light on me. Lift up your hands to him today. Bible says we should pray everywhere, lifting up our hands. Say, God, transform my life. Bring your light to shine in me. I give you praise. Hallelujah. No yoke survives this atmosphere. You're free. Free your finances. Everything that is restricting your life is gone. All yokes are broken. Every door is open to you. His glory fills your life. There's somebody here. I want to pray for you right now. You find yourself being carried into the river. I see it. Into the ocean, actually. Because that's what I see. The ocean. Not just a river. Ocean. You are carried there. You know what I'm talking about. Come here. Come and belong to Jesus fully. That covenant today, it comes to an end. Freedom is here right now. Come here, right now. Come here. Stand here. Deliverance is here. Raise your hands to him. No more. Nothing halfway. Nothing halfway. Nothing halfway. Everybody lift up your hands to God right now. Oh yes. The Lord owns your life. I'm annulling every covenant of hell. You belong to Jesus now. And by his blood, by his blood, you are delivered. Say with me, I belong to Jesus. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord now. He's Lord over my spirit. He's Lord over my soul. And he's Lord over my body. I renounce any dedication, any covenant that is made with any other spirit. I renounce any spirit from the waters. Tonight, this moment, I am free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Fill my life in the name of Jesus. And our yoke is broken from today. In the name of Jesus, you belong to God's kingdom, the citizen of the kingdom of God. That yoke is broken now in Jesus' name. I see fair from your life. Take it in Jesus' name and be free. Live out. Loose her in the name of Jesus. Free. No more. No covenant again with you. The name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Do surgery here today. And everything that Satan has taken out of your life because of this arrangement. Today, the Lord says, Restore. 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 Restore in the name of Jesus, my God. Like fire, like rain. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes, Jesus. Like fire, my God. Jesus. It's freedom time by His power now. I lose you in the name of Jesus. Be loosed. Be loosed. Go from her right now in Jesus' name. Go in the name of Jesus. And never return to her life in Jesus' name.
Jesus' name. Break it in the name of Jesus. The yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. Everything from hell is burnt up today in Jesus' name. Take it. Take it in the name of Jesus. Loser. Loser. In Jesus' name. Be free now in the name of Jesus. No more. Sing properly. Sing properly. Everybody sing again. My God. Oh, yes. My God. thank you for the word that has come today our lives are never the same again we are blessed we give you praise for every single one person that has had us all over the world because we know that their lives are turning around for good we speak into families we speak into jobs into health into finances we ask that the grace of God visit you this week in the name of Jesus we thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you live within Benin City, we'd like to have you come worship with us here at Glory Pavilion Church. Because it's a family church. And we know that anyone who comes in here will find fulfillment in Christ. Hallelujah. And for all those who have given to us, you've sown a seed, you've given an offering, you've given a donation to us at broadcast, we'd like to pray with you. Because we know that God answers our prayers here at Glory Pavilion Church. Bow your heads wherever you are. Our Father, we thank you for all who are supporting us, who are giving to the furtherance of your kingdom. We ask, Lord, that your grace will visit them this week in the name of Jesus. We speak to all situations around them and we command them to respond to God's word. To the glory and praise of your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Until we come your way again, we'd like you to stay blessed and stay in the grace of God. Because His grace is enough to get you over every situation. I'll see you again. God bless you. Ha ha ha!